Bruce Willis was one of the last true movie stars around, so now that this shiny-headed heartthrob of the 80s has settled into a well-deserved retirement, it's time to revisit his career. No doubt some films have immediately sprung to mind, but with a career as long and prolific as his, we promise there are going to be movies you've overlooked. Let me just refer to his famous one-liner, Welcome to the Party, Pal, as we count down the top 10 Bruce Willis movies of all time. Welcome to the party, pal! Number 10, Unbreakable. How certain are you that you've never taken ill? 75%? I'm going to be extremely skeptical about all of this. While Christopher Nolan tends to get all the credit for bringing the superhero world into a grittier, more realistic realm with the Dark Knight, it's really M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable which deserves this honor. And that's because, with it telling the tale of David Dunn, a man who discovers he has the superpowers of invulnerability and excellent instincts, it manages to take what should be a fantastical story and makes it feel real. Of course, a big part of the reason for this is the excellent understated performance from Bruce Willis in the lead, a performance so good it led to Quentin Tarantino himself naming it one of his favorite films of that year. Remember the story about the, about the boy that almost drowned in the pool? That was me they were talking about. I almost died. That was me. I'm not lying. Number 9, Looper. Bruce Willis has always had a good eye for finding the best young up-and-coming directors to work with, so when he got the chance to star in Ryan Johnson's sci-fi mindbender Looper, then he knew right away this one he couldn't pass up. Yes, playing the older version of Joseph Gordon-Levitt in this one, an assassin who specializes in taking out victims sent from a future where murder is harder to get away with, Willis really gets a chance to shine here. And that's because, with the cat and mouse game the two take part in after Levitt is contracted to kill the future iteration of himself, Willis gets to show he still has what it takes to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the younger generation, even this deep into his career. Number 8, Die Hard with a Vengeance. The general consensus amongst many Die Hard fans is that the first one is the good one and that the sequels are generally weak, but this logic ignores the fact that Die Hard with a Vengeance, the third entry in the franchise, is pretty great in its own right too. So good is it, in fact, it would end up becoming the highest grossing film worldwide of 1995, an impressive feat by anyone's standards, especially when there was such stiff competition in the form of Toy Story, Apollo 13, and GoldenEye. And what makes this one work so well is the buddy duo relationship between Willis's John McClane and Samuel L. Jackson's Zeus Carver, with them bouncing off each other so perfectly that they'd end up working together again multiple times afterwards in films such as Pulp Fiction, Unbreakable, and Glass. Just yank back on that and pull the trigger. That's it. That's it? That's it. Just don't shoot yourself. Number 7, The Fifth Element. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Don't shoot. I'm not the, wrong guy. the 90s saw Willis working with some of the most esteemed visionaries of cinema, one being none other than Luke Besson. Despite the precision in Besson's work, there was a fair amount of spontaneity in their collaboration. When Corbin Dallas, the futuristic taxi driver turned world saver, first sees the opera singer, it was also the first time Willis had also seen, and heard, the diva in full costume. That shot of his reaction is real. So is his reaction when Mila Jovovich speaks to him for the first time in her alien language. Jella, boom. Boom, yeah. I understand boom. Willis even ad-libbed the fan favorite line, Look lady, I only speak two languages, English and bad English. But despite the stellar success of the movie, it almost didn't happen. Willis was reluctant after a string of sci-fi flops, but two hours after reading the script, Willis signed on to make movie history. <gasps> Guard this with your life, or you're gonna look like this guy right here. Green? Green. Number six, Moonrise Kingdom. But I also blame myself, and both of you, with all due respect. You can't let your children stab people. Willis would pick up his comedy personas in Wes Anderson's coming of age love story. This time around, Bruce played Captain Sharp, the lovesick police captain who organizes the search party when two young lovers run away. He warmed to the project, having seen Anderson's previous work but no doubt the style of the movie is far removed from what Willis is used to. Anderson said he saw Willis as an iconic policeman who could deliver a Jimmy Stewart vibe, and indeed he did. 
Willis's reserved performance and awkwardness showed audiences how he could play soft and unspoken with such power. Though Willis and Anderson have not rekindled their working relationship, the fact he was cast alongside the director's regular collaborators helped shine a light on Willis's goofier side. Nobody's going anywhere. He's not getting shock therapy. That's it! Number 5. 12 Monkeys What year is this? What year do you think it is? 1996. That's the future, James. Do you think you're living in the future? 1996 is the past. Terry Gilliam has helmed some absolute masterpieces throughout his career. You just have to look at Brazil, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, or Monty Python and the Holy Grail for evidence of this. That said, probably his best movie to this day remains his time travel mindbender, Twelve Monkeys, a film which sees Bruce Willis play a man seemingly transported back to the past in order to stop an apocalyptic event from destroying the world. Here, though, we get to see a different side of him as, instead of playing a hardened action hero, he's far more fragile and sensitive. And this, as it turns out, is something which is matched in real life too by the actor's willingness to take a large pay cut so as to get the chance to work with Gilliam. Number 4. Sin City He doesn't know how to take his time. Aim careful and look the devil in the eye. One of the most visually striking movies of the 2000s, Sin City, was able to wow audiences with its cinematography upon release. It looks like it was lifted straight out of a comic book panel, so no wonder it was based on Frank Miller's graphic novel of the same name. But the reason it's special is far greater than this, of course. No, what makes it really stand out is Bruce Willis's portrayal of hardened cop, John Hardigan, in one of its three stories, That Yellow Bastard. And why is this so special? Well, using all the skills he'd build up playing pulp-style characters over the years prior, Willis was able to create the ultimate version of the trope here. So popular would it be, in fact, he'd even end up returning for the sequel, A Dame to Kill For, when it was released almost a decade later. Here it comes. It's gonna hurt. You're right about that. <laughs> Number 3. Pulp Fiction Reminded you not to forget the fucking watch! Did you get it? I believe so. You believe so? What the fuck does that mean? You either did or you didn't get it! What would this list be without the mention of Butch Coolidge? Though this was the second time he's worked with John Travolta, it was the first time they appeared on screen together and the first time he shot the Saturday Night Fever star to death. Interestingly, Willis's character has some of the fewest lines, a rarity in a Tarantino flick, where everyone has such finessed monologues, but this only helps draw out the broodiness and darkness of his performance. It took Harvey Keitel to convince Bruce to do the part, knowing he was a huge fan of Reservoir Dogs. Bruce was apparently disappointed at not being signed to play Vincent, so we thank Harvey for getting his friend to put on the boxing gloves. Though Willis only worked on the film for 18 days, the movie, along with Look Who's Talking, helped revive his career in the years after his breakout role as John McClane. In the end, it was Bruce's star power that helped sell the film for a cool $11 million. Number 2. The Sixth Sense This Tommy kid sounds like a real punk. I thought the play was excellent. Better than Cats. When it comes to Willis at his most dark and broody, look no farther than M. Night Shyamalan's masterpiece. We're going to avoid spoilers in the slim chance that you're the only person on the planet who doesn't know the twist. What's not a spoiler, though, is this film wouldn't be what it is if Willis hadn't taken the role of the sympathetic child psychologist, Malcolm Crowe. And yet, that's who Shyamalan had in mind when he was writing the script. No doubt he was drawn to the suave reassurance of Willis's soothing voice. Although it was down to Willis that the film went ahead, he owed Disney two movies after he had caused the Broadway brawler to be shut down when he was fired as director. We think it's fair to say his talents are not behind the camera. Don't give up. You're the only one who can help me. I know it. I can't help you. Someone else can help you. But when it comes to being in front of the camera, is there a more iconic role than this next entry? Our number one pick is Die Hard. <laughs> we all knew it was going to be this one, and why not? Not only is Bruce Willis at his most Bruce Willis when he's playing John McClane, but the entire film is supported by a stellar cast and crew. In fact, the first meeting between Bruce and Alan Rickman, who plays antagonist Hans Gruber, was unrehearsed to create a greater feeling of spontaneity between them. Funnily enough, Willis is more German than most of the villains having been born in West Germany to a German mother. 
Nowadays, Willis is known for his action legacy, but at the time, he wasn't on the movie posters because audiences associated him with his comedy roles like TV's Moonlighting. But as soon as the positive reviews poured in, Bruce was added back in. Of course, for Willis, it is still his favorite role, although he did suffer permanent hearing loss during the shooting, no pun intended. You're saying? No doubt you have your own thoughts about which ones we got right and which ones we got wrong, so let us know in the comments below. Leave a like if you want more content like this, and be sure to share it with any Willis fans. As always, hit that subscribe button to get notified of our next video.